Good day, you wonderful lot. Jacob here. We're now three generations into AMD's venture into the high-end CPU market with its Zen architecture, recently marked by the release of AMD's 7 nanometer Ryzen 3000 processors. And with each new microarchitecture, the gap between it and Intel's processor performance closes that little bit more, none having a more pronounced effect on the market than Zen 2. So today we've decided to quantify that gap, or potential lack thereof. To do so, we're going to pit Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, and Coffee Lake against one another to see which one emerges from the gladiatorial arena that is our graffiti test bench, brandishing the sandy entrails of its vanquished foes. Too much? Will AMD's 7 nanometer chiplet design be able to face down Intel on equal footing and finally level the playing field in the red team's favor after years of bulldozers, excavators, and pile drivers all attempting to do just that? I'm excited to find out, so let's get to the method. For this experiment, we'll be rolling out four 8-core 16-thread processors, three from AMD and one from Intel. These will be the Ryzen 7 1800X, Ryzen 7 2700X, Ryzen 7 3700X, and Core i9 9900K. If there were more Ryzens, I would have kept getting higher and higher. Aside from clock speeds and architectural tweaks, these chips represent an even matchup of the past few years of architectures from either team, and we'll be clocking each chip down to 3.5 GHz to ensure there's no frequency funny business going on during benchmarking. We also have to set some ground rules. Number one, every chip will utilize standardized equipment as per PCGN hardware regulations, that's a Corsair H100i V2 liquid cooler, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, and Corsair Dominator memory, clocked at a steady 3000 MHz. Zen 2 and Coffee Lake are both keen for a little faster kit, but since first-gen Ryzen processors mostly sputter at the sight of 3600, that's a no-go. Number two, no processor is to utilize a performance-enhancing or power-saving algorithm such as Turbo Boost, speed step, precision boost, or C power states. That means the usual fluctuating behavior you'd witness with these modern chips will not be present during this test to ensure a clean fight. Each core will instead float at 3.5 gigahertz night and day, idle and load. Besides architectural differences in how these chips execute operations, the only other variable will be the motherboard. We've opted for the ASUS X470 Strix Gaming E across the board for the red team, and the ASUS Z390 Maximus formula for Intel Silicon. AMD Zen 2 and Intel Coffee Lake mark two very different approaches to x86 architectures. Intel Coffee Lake is a refinement of the 14 nanometer process node first introduced with Skylake and crams I.O., Uncore, and Compute onto a single monolithic chip in the conventional manner. Meanwhile, AMD Zen 2 silicon builds upon the Zen architecture first introduced with Ryzen in 2017, refined and transferred onto the 7 nanometer process node from TSMC in CCDs or compute chiplets. AMD assures us that most of Zen 2's performance uplift does not originate from the 7 nanometer process node, however, instructions per clock or IPC has seen some 15% improvement over previous generations, and that's been enough to push Ryzen 3000 over the edge into competitive gaming performance, as evident in the benchmarks. Lower is better in Civ 6's AI turn time benchmark. It's a heavily CPU compute run, and we find the AMD Zen 2 architecture takes the lead over Coffee Lake. Meanwhile, Zen Plus and Zen fall slightly behind. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1080p Ultra, we see Zen 2 once again scoop past Zen Plus and Zen. However, this time IPC gains were not enough to best Intel's finest, if only by a couple of frames. It's a similar story in Far Cry. Zen 2 crushes previous generations, but cannot surpass Intel. It looks like game optimizations are heavily favoring Intel's design. The gap between Zen Plus and Zen 2 in this benchmark shows how far AMD's architecture has progressed since 12 nanometer. However, Total War is particularly amicable to Intel Silicon and has been optimized heavily towards the core design. And it's nearly a mirror image in Metro 2. While Zen 2 gets close to Coffee Lake, it can't quite find the efficiency to overtake, despite its evident compute lead. The IPC increase of Zen 2 makes its mark in this bipartisan benchmark, demonstrating the aforementioned compute lead. Zen 2, clock for clock, manages to operate considerably faster than Coffee Lake in both single and multi-threaded runs. Zen and Zen Plus score relatively the same, unsurprising considered we nerfed the major difference between these two chips, clock speed. 
However, Zen 2 screeches by, outpacing even Intel's top client Silicon by quite a margin. AMD takes the lead in Cinebench R20 by quite some distance. It also skyrockets ahead of Zen, Zen Plus and Coffee Lake in X264 V5, and this suggests that on raw compute performance, Zen 2 dominates the field. But that does not carry across gaming benchmarks, in which we see Intel taking charge. And that suggests that game optimizations are responsible for Intel's performance upswing. That could mean that there's still performance left on the table with Zen, a symptom left over from a time when few bothered considering developing for AMD CPU tech in the gaming market. With a growing market share, developers may find it conducive to their player base to start tweaking a little more in AMD's favour in the years to come, but that also relies on AMD matching Intel's investment in the developer ecosystem. Front-end advances made with Zen 2, such as branch prediction, prefetching, and cache restructuring, have paved the way to the performance improvement we're seeing with Zen 2. The architecture has been streamlined since Zen Plus, with an updated core complex featuring larger banks of cache and a more efficient interconnect fabric. Floating point bandwidth has also been doubled, and integer execution being similarly beefed up to make better use of every clock pumping through Ryzen's veins. Not to say there's nothing to be gained from the shift to the 7 nanometer process from the 12 nanometer process, which is essentially a 14 nanometer process with a twist. The move allows AMD to shrink the CCX floor plan by roughly 29% from Zen Plus and take the front foot and gain process node superiority over its age old rival. Performance per watt increases dramatically, and while Zen remains a somewhat thirsty architecture when pushed to the lofty clocks required by desktop chips, the latest chips sap a lot less power from the wall. Another key consideration here is also the effect to which security vulnerabilities, and the subsequent patches that fix them, have affected processor performance. Intel has been hit worst of all out of the two x86 manufacturers by the recent wave of scandalously named bugs, and that will have an effect on its execution and overall performance clock for clock. So what is it then that still keeps AMD from the gaming crown? Well, a great deal of Intel's performance seems to derive from specific optimizations for its architecture, which have been simply too great to counter retroactively for AMD. The red team is still fighting its way out of a corner and doing a fantastic job of it, but it needs to continue this dominance to swing the overall processor market, made up of old, new, dual-core and high-core count processors, over to its sanguine shores. Until that time, the player base remains overwhelmingly Intel, and with that too goes developers' attention. But it's also a question of architectures. Despite today's rhetoric, Intel processors are still built on an incredibly dexterous architecture, even if it's getting a bit long in the tooth these days. The foundations of Skylake and the 14 nanometer process node seem to be reaching the end of their potential, yet Intel has proven this architecture to be increasingly adaptable beyond its initial design spec, and its IPC remains competitive to this day. Following Ice Lake, Intel is set to restart its core architecture efforts with the Sunny Cove core. Once that hits the desktop, which may be a while off yet, AMD will be rocking Zen 3 7 nanometer plus parts and looking towards its next step with Zen 4. At this pace, the results of this experiment could be very different come 2021. And with that, I say goodbye. But if you've enjoyed today's video, let us know by hitting that like button, subscribing and all that jazz. And let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see another vid like this one next time Intel and AMD step up to the plate with a new architecture. See you next time.